All right, the party's on Corwin Campbell. <laughs> all right, have you all had a chance to confer over the discovery issue? Yes. Sir. All right, and what is the discovery issue? Uh, there are two uh, requests. Uh, this is stems from the uh, discovery order that we signed back in September. Yes. And, uh, could everyone please whisper? And I'm sorry if you could speak up. It was uh, regarding the year discovery order back in September, and I submitted a letter on November 14th and November 29th to Mr. Sanders, uh, also proposing the order. He suggested that we prepare in regards to two items mm -hmm. from your discovery order, and I had not heard from him. And I asked him for some additional information, and Brittany, unfortunately, has, knows nothing about this case. So I think she would All right, this. so this is what we're going to do because I do know that. Um, Mr. Sanders is on paternity leave. And my understanding is he's accepted a new position, so he won't be coming back to this court. Uh, and I'm still waiting to see who the first chair is gonna be in this court. So what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna reset it. Uh, this will not interfere with his time as far as when I give a plea deadline date or anything like that. But I want you to, your attorney to have a chance to confer with the prosecutor who's gonna be on this case. and. Uh, Ms. Sparks and um, Mr. Escobar. Hopefully that's his last name. <laughs> um, they're not able to really confer with you because this wasn't their case. So they don't know what's going on with the case. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set it um, for the second, well, third week in the new year. And so hopefully we'll know who the first chair is and this will give them a chance to let the first chair know and they need to be ready for the discovery motion. All right, Ms. Ferguson, can I have a, a reset for discovery on Corwin Campbell for the third week in January, please? The 17th. All right, so we'll be back on January 17th. Uh, Your Honor, I'm, I'm not gonna be in Texas. Oh, where will you be? Do tell. My son, who is a concrete contractor, specialty floors, said, Dad, can you come with me to the concrete convention in Las Vegas for the 16, 17, 18? And I said, why well, wouldn't you want me to go to that? Yeah. He says, well, I want you to come. So I'm going. And I he probably has a surprise for you. Well, it is my birthday on the 16th, but I don't think my son would think that far. Uh, <laughs> yes, he probably <laughs> is. I mean, anytime you can uh, spend time with children is a great time. And the fact that he invited you, his dad, he probably could have invited anyone else. And he's like, no, I want to invite my dad. And he actually paid for the airline too. Oh, it, better than I. <laughs> see, he's paying for the airline ticket. Brenna, if he doesn't go, I will. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Don't, did you see the movie, The Hangover? Yes, I did. <laughs> Is that what, that's going to happen with you guys? We're going to be reading about you in the news. <laughs> All right, so we can't do the 17th. He's going to be enjoying time with his son. I can do the 20th. Yeah, that was the 23rd. All right, so we'll be back on the 23rd, and I expect a, a book report. Didn't they used to do that? I expect a, not a book report. I expect a report on your time you spent. One of the things I did one years ago, I was speaking at a point a lot. I brought my lunch at 11 years old. Mm -hmm. I said, you can go out and look at everything. No, he was at 16. So he sent me pictures yeah. back, yeah. not of them that wanted to go to the White House construction site, <laughs> big holes in the ground. That's See? <laughs> See, you knew what he was going to do. Well, enjoy and let us know if there's anything new in the field of concrete yeah. when you come back. All right. Good morning, Mr. Gonzalez. Morning. All right. So we are here because my understanding an offer was tendered. Have you received the offer? Uh, yeah. Have, all right. Are you rejecting the offer? Or do um, are you rejecting the offer? All right. So you're requesting a jury trial. All right. And counsel, this hasn't been signed by you. That's okay. And that's okay. And state, how long do you expect this um, jury trial to last? It's a drug case. Probably two days. Okay. 
All right, and Mr. Gonzalez, have you received all the discovery and seen it? No. Uh, we've been given an opportunity to review it and look at it right at a glance, and it's not paid. All right. Do you need to look at the state's discovery? Mr. Gonzalez, do you need to see the state's discovery? Do you need to see the police reports? Do you need yes. to see the drug test? Yes. All right, Mr. Sherman, could you show him the state's uh, file in the box? Sure. All right, so uh, once you look at that, then we'll come back, okay? All right, so we're here for discovery. Yes, good morning, Judge. Good morning. And it was a discovery related to a detective, is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. The um, prosecutor that has this case is out with COVID, uh, Mr. Virion. And um, the, I, I was talking um, with um, Catherine, excuse me. <laughs> anyway, I was talking with Catherine about it, and the discovery issue on the detective is, is continues to develop. She's the subject of a protective order now and some other things that are going on. And so I, I sent a letter and then I reminded her she put it in the file. But obviously, without uh, Mr. Villarreal, we, we still haven't received a plea offer. So, all right. So, uh, is that the only outstanding discovery? Is there any CPS records involved in this? I'm not sure. I, I don't think so, Judge. Um, that none that we've been made aware of and none that we've been able to find. But is the complainant alleged to be a relative? No. All right. And does he have any children? No. All right. So, there's probably no CPS records. Ms. Ferguson, can we call this back uh, in January, the third week of January for discovery? Yes, ma'am, the 19th. All right, so we're going to come back on the 19th, Mr. Maldonado. Yes, and we'll see where we are with regards to discovery. Thank you very much. You're welcome. In the middle uh, did you get it? Uh, Mr. Jimenez, did you have a chance to confer with the state? I did, Your Honor. All right. And they're aware of the reason why he did not appear? They are, Your Honor. Yeah. All right. And do they have any objection? No, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Mr. Guerra, this is what I'm going to tell you. Um, when people don't show up for court, I do issue warrants because they know what time they're supposed to show up. They know they were supposed to be. You, and you're not the only one who does it, need to stop letting other people be your point of contact because be it your father, your mother, your brother, your girlfriend, your sister, your cousin, whoever it may be, they are not the people who have to appear in court. And when someone calls them and tells them this is your court date and they don't pass that message on, they don't get in trouble. It's all on you. You understand? Yes, sir. So, um, I'm signing the motion and Ms. Ferguson on, I'm going to give him a reset date right here so he'll know when it is. It's on uh, Raphael Guerra. It's an off docket. The cause number is 2022-CR10784. Uh, do we already have a set date in the system? Um, I can check that. Uh, no, ma'am, because he was a bug. All right. Uh, let's give him a date uh, at the end of January. Do January January 30th. All right. So you got to get a reset form for January 30th. And I'm going to notate in the file that one, I spoke to you. So you know, be here on January 30th at 9 a.m. I require everyone to be on time. You understand? Uh, state on this case involving Raphael um, Guerra, do you all want a no contact order with the complainant? Yes. So there's to be no contact with Stephanie Martinez and Clarissa, Clarissa Grego. So you're not to have any contact with them. You understand? Yes, sir. And were you previously on GPS or anything? Oh, yeah. Okay. If you violate the court's order, what's going to end up happening is a warrant will be issued. Mm -hmm. And we will be hearing this motion um, with you being in custody. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Counsel, do you know if any there are any alcohol issues or drug issues with your client? No, Your Honor. Okay. All right. 
And Norma, you said January when? The 30th. All right, so we'll see you back on January 30th. Thank you for your consideration, Josh. You're welcome. And you can put that on the system. All right, so Mr. Gonzalez, here's the thing. Um, you've asked to see the state's file. You need to sit there and read the state's file. I don't believe he was even giving me the chance to see it. Like, uh, he's just been cursing. Like, ever since I first met him, he's just been. Okay, so here's the thing. We're going to start over this relationship at zero. And when I say at zero starting this relationship, it's Mr. Gonzalez, here's your attorney, Mr. Sherman. Y'all just met today. And what I want you all to do is to sit in the box. And Mr. Sherman, if you'll let him read the file. I will. Just sit there and read the file. And then after you read it, if you have any questions, then uh, I'm sure he will answer them. Uh, in this court, I know uh, tempers can run high because it's a felony court in the nature of the cases. This is a drug case. Sometimes tempers run high in the drug case. But I do require that everyone treats people with respect, whether you respect them or not. Everyone be kind to everybody, whether you're faking it or not because that makes the day go easier and it keeps the temperature at this level because these are important cases, they're felony cases. In cases here, people are looking at anywhere uh, from prison all the way up to the death penalty, so I understand. So if you all will be kind to me, sit in the box and read the state's file, okay? This one. All right, so you guys have just met. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Who's here on Michael Kilgore? All right. And where's Mr. Kilgore? Oh, come up, Mr. Kilgore. All right. What is happening with Mr. Kilgore? I have a plea offer. Mm -hmm. My client would like a little time to considers options. State has agreed to keep that open until the next setting, whatever that be. And at that time, I'm sure there'll be a plea or we'll set, say go to trial. All right. And let's see. Do you have all the discovery? I do have uh, yes, all right, Mr. Kilgore, how old are you? 27. All right, you're 27. So is this something for you to think about or is this something for you to call other people about? This is something for me to think about. So I said about a business out there. Okay, no, no, no. I mean, I don't want to know the offer, but I'm just trying to figure out in my mind how much time you need, okay? All right, do you want to come back next week then? Sure. Okay. Uh, Ms. Fergus, can we put him on for next week? Is mm -hmm. it possible? Do we have any room? Hey, let me, let me check in. We'll see if we have any room. If not, we may have to do it this week. If you want to come back this week. Come back Friday. Yeah, we can. I'm here coming Friday. Anyway, All right, Ms. Ferguson, can we put him down for Friday? Friday, I can do Friday. All right, so we'll put you down uh, for Friday the 16th, okay? All right. Have you excused me? Uh, uh, yes. All right, thank you. Mr. Kilgore. All right. Good morning. So, has he spoken to his immigration attorney? Uh, he has. They still need to find the steps. We have confirmed with the state. Yeah. All right, uh, Miss Ferguson on Houghton. Could I have a PTD date, please? Uh, yes, ma'am. We can come back on. Um, we can do the second of February. Mm -hmm. All right. So, on the what's going to happen on that date? You need to have all of your paperwork filled out. He's coming to the office right now. To okay, start oh, you're on it. I appreciate that. Of course, I understand, Ron. All right, uh, we'll see you back on February second. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome. Court is calling 2019 CR 4485, State of Texas versus Daniel Munoz. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Michelle Hayden for the state. Defense. And are you Mr. Munoz? Thank you. Mr. Munoz, I'm going to show you what's entitled motion to revoke community supervision. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? 
Are you the same Daniel Munoz who was placed on community supervision in 2019 CR 4485 for the offense of violation of sex offender registration on August 22nd, 2019 for a term of three years? Is that you? Is that you? All right, state. <clears throat> Violated condition number one, on or about the third day of January 2022 in Bear County, Texas, the defendant Daniel Nunez committed the offense of violation of sex offender registration in violation of condition number one. How do you plead to that? True or not true? True. State? We will waive the other violation. Any objections to the state's waivers? No objections, Your Honor. Did you understand by pleading true to violation of condition number one, the court could find it true, grant the motion and sentence you up to two years in the prison? Did you understand? Yes, Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violation of condition number one? Court will find violation of condition number one true. Is there an agreement? Yes, Your Honor. Um, the agreement is to revoke and sentence the defendant to two years in prison, but we will TIC the new case, uh, CM number 959. Three violation of sex offender registration. Is that the agreement? It is. Are you asking the court to follow that agreement? Yes, Mr. Uh, Munoz, are you asking the court to follow that agreement? Are you waiving your right to appeal? All right, the court will follow your agreement. The court will grant the motion, sentence you to two years in the prison, taking consideration night mag number 95933. Give you credit for any time served, and there's to be chapter 62 registration. Is there anything else from either side with regards to sentencing? No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. Showing you what's entitled trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waived your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Do you understand? And because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? All right, good luck to you. We can go off the record. Mr. Munoz, you know you have to register. So you have a choice to make in your life. You cannot register and spend the remaining of your life in and out of jails, in and out of prison. At some point, you're gonna end up being habitual. And at some point, your minimum is going to be 25 years. And at some point, if you continue on your path, you're going to end up in prison for the rest of your life. So you got to make a decision. The law says you have to register. You have to register. End of story. There's no ands, ifs, or buts about it. You understand? All right. Good luck to you. Uh, you can read the dates on the record, but make sure that the clerks have them. Okay. And, and you're an officer of the court. So, of course, I. Um, I will provide Except your word is true, Mr. Stateson. Yeah. Brenda, it's always nice to see Mr. Stateson. All right. Court is going to call 2020. CR 4098A, State of Texas versus Brianna Renee Mitchell. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Brady Sparks. Defense. The attorney record, Monica Guedetto. I'm covering for Ms. Guedetto, Joseph Stateson. Ms. Mitchell, would you give this judge permission for me to do the plea in case of Monica Guedetto? Yes, ma'am. All right, I'm gonna need you to speak up, okay? Yes. All right, are you uh, Brianna Mitchell? Yes, ma'am. All right, I'm showing you what's entitled motion to revoke community supervision. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes. Are you the same Brianna Renee Mitchell who was placed on community supervision in 2020 CR 4098A for the offense of manslaughter on December 10th, 2021 for a term of 10 years? Is that you? Yes. All right, state. Yes, Judge, violated condition number one on or about the 8th day of September 2022 in Bear County, Texas. The defendant, Brianna uh, Renee Mitchell, committed the offense of possession of controlled substance. Penalty group one in violation of condition number one. How do you plead to that? True or not true? True. Violated condition number one on or about the 8th day of September 2022 in Bear County, Texas. The defendant, Brianna Renee 
Mitchell committed the offense of fail to ID uh, fugitive intent to give false information in violation of condition number one. How do you plead to that? True or not true? True. Violated condition number one on or about the 8th day of September 2022 in Bear County, Texas, the defendant Brianna Renee Mitchell committed the offense of evade arrest or detention in violation of condition number one. How do you plead to that? True or not true? True. We'll waive the other violations. Any objections to the state's waivers? None. All right. Did you understand by pleading true to violations one, one, and one, the court could find it true, grant the motion, and sentence you up to 10 years in prison and up to a $1,500 fine? Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violations one, one, and one? Yes. The court will find one, one, and one true. Is there an agreement? Yes, Judge, we're asking that you grant the motion, revoke her probation, and sentence her to 10 years in the TDC. In addition, Judge, we'll be taking into consideration cause numbers 2022-CR10345B, county court cause number 692-652, county court cause number 692-653. Is that the agreement, <laughs> defense? It is, Your Honor, and I, I, believe I, I may have made a, a clerical uh, typo on the certificate of appeal. I may have put the nightmare on the knee. I may have put the case in the TIC instead of the NPR. With my yes. Now, I'll correct that. Is there any objections to the court correcting that with the proper cause number? And if I may put something else in the record, Your Honor. Yes. Uh, this offense was created during a time where Ms. Mitchell was in on federal release, supervised release. She has federal back time and post the offense, she did time in federal prison. I have some dates if I could put those on the record. Yes. She was in custody in federal prison or federal custody on April 18, 2016, where she was sentenced November 17, 2016. And she was not released until April 3rd, 2020. When she was released uh, April 3rd, 2020, it was supervised release. And there was a revocation hearing. And she has federal custody time from February 18th, 2022 to April 13th, 2022. And we ask that she be given credit for federal time in addition to the Barrett County time. So you're asking for credit from April 18th, 2016 to April 13th, 2020? We are, and I did explain to my client that that is prior to the offense date, but it was, she was still in custody post that also, and that it's the court's discretion to award um, time. So with regards to the dates from April 18th, 2016 to April 13th, 2020, was this case open on a motion to revoke or no? I don't believe it was on a motion to revoke. All right, was this case pending? I have to, I can so, check one moment, Your Honor. Okay, so that's what I want to know about that. But with regards to the February 18th, 2020, I'm sorry, February 18th, 2022 to April 13th, 2022, this was pending, correct? Yes. All right, so she will definitely receive credit for those dates. I just need to check on the April 18th date. Can you look at for that too? So that was the So when this case uh, when this case was on the system. What date was that again? <laughs> All right. Well, it appears, uh, Ms. Sparks, yes, yes. on this case, uh, I'm being informed by the clerk that this case was actually on the system January uh, second, 2016. Yes, that's just what our computer says. Okay. So we can go back on the record, Brenda. 
So uh, are you asking the court to follow this agreement? Yes. Are you waiving your rights up here? Yes, ma'am. All right. Uh, then the court is finding one, one, and one true. The court will follow your agreement, revoke, sentence you to 10 years in the prison, take in consideration 2022 CR 10345B, county court cause number 692652, 692653, give you credit for any time served, and the court will give you uh, the credit served in federal custody from April 18, 2016 to April 3rd, 2020, and February 18th, 2022 to April 13th, 2022. Is there anything else from either side with regards to sentencing? No, Judge. Nothing from defense. Okay. All right. For some reason, there's no affirmative finding on this of on a deadly weapon. Yes. Uh, let me see something just one moment. I don't know what the underlying facts of this case were. Just give me one second. I'm assuming a weapon was involved, be it a vehicle or something else. All right, yeah, it's involved a gun. It, it appears that my client of said it was with the co-defendant who had a gun, her client did have a gun, but that was not negotiated with the district attorney's office with Marcus Surge prior to this. All right, because it, uh, um, I mean, according to the, and I know this is before your time, Mr. Stateson, but according to the um, indictment, it says that um, Brianna Mitchell did recklessly cause the death of an individual, namely, uh, you know, the complainant by discharging a deadly weapon. So that's, this is pre this attorney, Ms. Mitchell, but that's what's in the, the paperwork. So there's going to be an affirmative finding. So there's an affirmative finding of a deadly weapon. I'm gonna show you what's entitled trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, sir. All right, because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, because you waived your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? Yes, sir. All right, good luck. We can go off the record. I saw in this case where parenting classes were ordered for you. <laughs> so here's the thing, someone else is taking care of your children or your child. When you are released from prison and at some point you will be, do not go up to the house acting as though, here I am, let me put my rules in place and disregard whatever rules have been set for your children. You understand? You're gonna have to humble yourself. All right, good luck to you. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. In on Charles Jones. I got your email. Who's here on Jared Johnson? Did anything happen with him today? Because my case still isn't indicted. Uh, no, they swore him in. Oh, God. Sorry. No, uh, Caroline is on it. If she hands me something, that means she's done everything. All right, the court is calling 2022 CR 5992 State of Texas versus Jared Lane Johnson. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Brittany Sparks. Defense. Defense. Sorry, Tilden Schaefer. And are you Mr. Johnson? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, I'm showing you the discovery acknowledgement. Have you received all the discovery in this case and did you review it with your client? I didn't. I have. Court will find that the state is in compliance with discovery. Mr. Johnson, I'm showing you what's entitled application for deferred adjudication or community supervision. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Next, I'm showing you what's entitled true bill of indictment. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Counsel, do you weigh the reading of the indictment? I do, Your Honor. State, are you proceeding on the indictment as presented? And I believe we're going forward on count one and waiving count two. Any objection? No, Your Honor. 
All right, Mr. Johnson, I'm going to show you what's entitled Court Admonishments and Defendant's Waivers and Affidavit of Admonitions. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, Did you understand you're charged with the offense of possession with intent to deliver a controlled substance? Penalty group two, four grams to 400 grams. That's a first degree felony. The range of punishment is anywhere from five to 99 years or life in prison and up to a $10,000 fine. Did you understand? If you have a plea bargain agreement with the state, the court does not have to follow your plea bargain agreement. If for any reason the court doesn't follow your agreement and gives you more than you bargained for, the fact that you entered a plea will not be used against you and you will be allowed to withdraw your plea. Did you understand? Did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state will call and the right to remain silent? Did you understand by entering this plea, you were giving up those rights? Yes, ma'am. And did you intend to give up those rights and enter into a plea bargain agreement in this case? No. Did you understand if the court were to grant your application for deferred adjudication, if for any reason your deferred adjudication were revoked, the court could find you guilty and sentence you up to life in prison and up to a $10,000 fine? Did you understand? Counsel, has your client been able to provide you with any defenses? Yes, Your Honor. Do you believe he has a rational as well as a factual understanding of the charges against him? He does, Your Honor. Do you believe he's currently competent and was legally sane at the time of the offense? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Mr. Johnson, has anyone threatened you, coerced you, or placed you here to get you to enter this plea? No, ma'am. Has anyone promised you anything other than the plea bargain agreement? No, ma'am. Are you satisfied with the way you've been represented? Yes, ma'am. Are you a U.S. citizen? Yes, ma'am. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived his right to jury trial, showing you the plea bargain page. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. According to the plea bargain agreement, there's a $1,500 fine. State recommends deferred adjudication. There's to be $57 to SAPD for drug testing. Did you understand that to be the plea? No. Defense? Yes, Your Honor. State? Yes, Judge. Showing you the paragraph entitled waiver of appeal paragraph. Did you review that paragraph with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in both places? Yes, Your Did you understand by signing that you're waiving your right to appeal? The only items that can be appealed are written pretrial motions that have been filed, heard, and ruled upon by the court. Did you understand? Counsel, there been any such motions? No, Your Honor. Next, I'm showing you outside the agreement. The state is requesting that your deferred adjudication be for a term of five years and there be a TAP evaluation. Did you understand those are recommendations from the state and the court does not have to follow those recommendations? Sure. Then the offense is charged in count one. How do you plead? Guilty, not guilty, or no contest? I'm not guilty. 2022. State, any evidence? Yes, Judge. State, it's a good one in all attachments. Mr. Johnson, I'm showing you what's entitled Wavering Consent to Stipulation of Testimony and Stipulations. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it and did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Again, did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state will call in the right to remain silent? Did you understand that today the state will be presenting evidence in the form of witnesses, statements, and police reports, but most importantly, there will be no live testimony. Did you understand? Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived and consented to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Court will accept into evidence states exhibits one and attachments and review the same. <laughs> All right, after reviewing state's exhibits one and attachments, the court will find there's sufficient evidence to find you guilty. The court will defer finding of guilt as you've applied for deferred adjudication. Are you proceeding with sentencing? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Anything you want to um, present on behalf of your client? Uh, judge, I think he's come to the court understanding that uh, he needs to kind of change his lifestyle. And uh, this has made a big mistake here, Judge. So he's asking to follow. All right. You made bad choices, not mistakes, right? Um, All right. When you're drug tested today, what are the results going to be? I'm going to come out. Yeah. All right. Have you been using? No, no. All right. So we're going to do a UA today, and then I'll come back with sentencing. Okay. okay. All right. Do you need water or anything? Sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. If you could remain in court and uh, yeah. counsel, if you can get him a cup of water. I think we have cups in the back. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right. Um, 
Can you look in those files? Because I saw that there was a bond forfeiture on this case. Was that recalled by some other judge? Uh, it's Young yeah, Silva. It's a 2021 CR 9571. So I can tell you about the bond forfeiture, Judge. Okay. So before I was hired, Don had a court appointed attorney. He got no notice of the indictment and his court setting. And so he missed court. He came in and hired me. I came, I can't remember if I talked to you or if there was a visiting judge. Okay. And, and we I just wanted to make sure because I like to have everything on the docket sheet. Sure. Okay. Oh, see, I reinstated it. Brenda, I recall that like that was yesterday because my mind is a still trap. Of course. All right. So uh, has he spoken to the immigration attorney? So we applied to the immigration attorney. We turned in the paperwork. We're still waiting to hear. So we have not heard from him. Is that the immigration attorney with the back? Yeah. All right. Uh, Norma, can you see what's happening with that? Because that's been since November. Is it this with, 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 with Max? Yes. So we're going to make sure he has an immigration attorney. Yeah, we did the paperwork. And okay. That was with um, oh, was her. All right. And where are we on discovery? We were good on discovery. There was an issue with a, with a purported alias of Mr. Silva, but we figured that all out. All right. And with regards to um, offers, has the state been able to tender an offer? They have not tendered an offer. All right. All right. Is this criminal trial division or family law? Criminal trial. All right. Uh, criminal trial division? Daniel, I was talking to you. Oh. I don't know. Do you know when you all will be able to make an offer on Aiden Silva? It was Daniel. I was talking to you. It was Daniel. Um, was, are we missing any discovery or anything? No, there's no discovery missing. Mm -hmm. um, we just it, essentially, we have a very upset complaining um, and a very upset defendant and so there seems to be a very very wide range and so there's no formal so there's a lot of emotions yes and so we're trying to kind of get through the emotions to get to a point where and judge daniel's on the phone with the victim right now so i don't know if we could call this back up in a couple of minutes when he gets back okay um well this is what I, i'll i'll do because he's on the phone with a complaint and he really can't do anything until he speaks to his immigration attorney oh, okay so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to reschedule this. Norma, could you put this in the fourth week of January, that week of uh, January 23rd? Yes, ma'am. And if you could hang around with your client, because we're going to make sure that the immigration attorney knows they need to contact him before that date. Okay. You can do the 24th. All right. So we're going to come back on January 24th. And Mr. Civil, we're going to have you remain in court. Uh, until we make sure that you have the name of your immigration attorney. All right, is there anything else? No, you're right. All right, uh, thank you so much for coming down. My pleasure, Judge. Thank you, have a good one. And Judge, may I vote for your signature? Yes, you may. Thank you. Oh, Who is it? And Norma, you said the 24th, correct? Yes, thank, you. thank you. Have a good one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, the court is calling 2018 CR 12678 State of Texas versus Erica Monique Rodriguez. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Brittany Sparks. Defense. John Robertson from Ms. Rodriguez. And are you Ms. Rodriguez? Mm -hmm. Counsel, I'm showing you the discovery acknowledgement. Have you received all the discovery in this case and did you review it with your client? Court will find that the state is in compliance with discovery. Ms. Rodriguez, I'm showing you what's entitled application for community supervision. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it and did you sign it? Counsel, um, I'm sorry. Next, I'm showing you what's entitled true bill of indictment. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Counsel, do you waive the reading of the indictment? State, are you proceeding on the indictment as presented? No, Judge. 
and Shit, I'm sorry. I oh, no problem. I think Let me count see. One. Two. Oh, count two. two. Okay. All right. Any objections to the waivers of counts one, three, and four? No, no. All right, I'm going to show you what's entitled court admonishments and defendants waivers and affidavit of admonitions. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? And Ms. Sparks, I know it's just you and uh, Daniel here and Daniel's out. If you want to continue to confer okay. and uh, just answer when I need a okay. response for you. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right. Did you understand that what you're charged with in count two is possession of a controlled substance penalty group one, one gram to four grams? That's a third degree felony. The range of punishment is anywhere from two to 10 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine. Did you understand? If you have a plea bargain agreement with the state, the court does not have to follow your agreement. If for any reason the court does not follow your agreement and gives you more than you bargained for, the fact that you entered a plea will not be used against you and you will be allowed to withdraw your plea. Did you understand? Did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? Did you understand by entering this plea bargain agreement, you were giving up those rights? And did you intend to give up those rights and enter into a plea bargain agreement in this case? Yes. Counsel, has your client been able to provide you with any defenses? Yeah. Do you believe she has a rational as well as a factual understanding of the charges against her? Do. do you believe she's currently competent and was legally sane at the time of the offense? Yes, sir. Ms. Rodriguez, has anyone threatened you, coerced you, or placed you in fear to get you to enter this plea? No, has anyone promised you anything other than the plea? No. Are you satisfied with the way you've been represented? Yes, ma'am. Are you a U.S. citizen? Yes, ma'am. The court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived her right to jury trial, showing you the plea bargain page. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. According to the plea, state is proceeding on count two. Punishment is to be assessed at five years in the prison. State recommends community supervision. They will take in consideration county court cause number 636-158-697. 151. Did you understand that to be the plea? Yes, ma'am. Defense? Yes, State? Yes, Judge. Showing you the paragraph entitled Waiver of Appeal Paragraph. Ahead. Did you review that paragraph with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in both places? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand by signing that you're waiving your right to appeal? The only items that can be appealed are written pretrial motions that have been filed, heard, and ruled upon by the court. Did you understand? Yes, Counselor, there being such motions. Yes, Next, I'm showing you outside the plea bargain agreement. State is requesting that your community supervision be for a term of five years. There be a TAP evaluation and 120 hours of community service restitution. Did you understand those are recommendations from the state and the court does not have to follow those recommendations? Then to the offense that's charged in count two, how do you plead? Guilty, not guilty, or no contest? State, any evidence? Yes, Judge. State's exhibit one and all attachments. Objection. All right, Ms. Rodriguez, I'm showing you what's entitled waiver and consent to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, Your Honor. Again, did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call and the right to remain silent? Did you understand that today the state will be presenting evidence in the form of witnesses' statements and police reports and lab reports, but most importantly, there will be no live testimony. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived and consented to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Court will accept into evidence states exhibits one and attachments and review the same. All right, after reviewing states exhibits one and attachments, the court will find there is sufficient evidence to find you guilty and the court will find you guilty. Are we proceeding with sentencing? Yes, Your Honor. Anything you wish to say on behalf of your client? Your Honor, I ask the court to follow the agreement. Um, Erica, is, we talked about this. She's got some changes to make in her life, and she's going to use this as an opportunity to make some positive change to turn ahead in a, in a better direction for her and her son. All right. How many children do you have? Three, four total. What are their ages? Um, one to eight, but he's in Washington. Mm -hmm. um, with his adoptive family, and then I have two girls, a uh, 17-year-old, an 18-year-old, and my three-year-old son. 
And who is the three-year-old with? Right now, he's with my mom and dad. But my mom recently got, uh, she's in a wheelchair now, so he's trying to take care of him. And so I'm able to come out and continue being mom to him that mm -hmm. I have been since he's been born. I'm all he is. Well, here's the thing. You haven't been a good mom to him. And sometimes we have to take stock of our life. Mm -hmm. And if you take stock of your life, you haven't been a good mom to him because otherwise you wouldn't be here for this. Is child protective services involved? Yes. Who's your child protective services attorney? She didn't have one yet, Judge. It's a, it's a fresh case. I actually spoke to the caseworker yesterday. They haven't filed paperwork yet, okay. but it sounds like there may be a situation. I've talked a little bit with Erica this morning about it, that they may be a temporary custody situation where they get her on a plan mm -hmm. and, and uh, with the goal of getting the child back with her. Um, but it's kind of at the beginning of that stage. She hasn't had an attorney appointed yet. Okay. How far did you go in school? Uh, Why didn't you graduate? Because I with my oldest. So what have you been doing? Because your oldest is 18 now. Mm -hmm. So what have you been doing to better yourself employment wise? Um, I was working with uh, my boyfriend's mom because she owns a warehouse and I've been um, working and helping just like with shipment and stuff like that. And um, is this Isaiah Salinas? Okay. Who is this boyfriend? Um, Kyle Herrera. Kyle what? Herrera. Herrera. Okay. Does he have criminal history? No. Does he have a drug issue? No. Do you have a drug issue? No. So, and have you been with Kyle while you, you've had this drug issue? Yes, but he... He's more like, um, like an, uh, like he, because he's working, like it makes me want to work. Like he's like a positive influence in my life. Mm, here's the thing. This is what I've discovered on my time on the planet. I tell everybody I'm in the twilight of my life or the fall of my life, because I don't expect to live to be 200. It'd be nice if I did. But if everybody lives to be 200, then that means that we can't retire until we're 160. Who wants to do that, right? But this is what I've discovered. I've discovered that usually people who have the same interests gravitate towards each other. For example, if somebody invites me to a lunch with marathon runners, I'll show up because I'm supporting maybe somebody else who's a marathon runner. But we're not going to hang out on a day-to-day -day basis. We're not going to discuss what type of shoes they wear. You know why? Because I'm not a marathon runner. That's just not what I do. Um, when people have drug addictions, usually the people they're with have drug addictions or either they enable them. So I know you're not going to sit here and try to tell me that Kyle doesn't use drugs. If he does, he doesn't, he hasn't done it around me. I haven't really been like physically with me. prior to me getting arrested. I haven't like, I wasn't with him. I was just, it was just me and my son. It's always me and my son. Have you done um, drugs around Cal? Yes, ma'am. And what did he say? That's part of the reason why I haven't been around him. All right. And I'm not going to allow you to be around him now. And I'm going to give you some advice. And this is me coming from a standpoint of somebody who's done child protective services cases where I've represented children and I've represented parents. Your main focus should be on getting your child back. Yes, your main focus should not be on relationships because guess what? You're not ready for a relationship. And you know why you're not ready for a relationship? Because you're in the throes of your addiction. And when you're in the throes of your addiction, you're choosing the wrong people. You're making bad choices. And the problem with you is when you make a bad choice, your choice is impacting your child. It's impacting your mom. It's impacting your father because now they got to raise a three-year-old. And I know they didn't intend to have that happen in their life. You understand? Yes, so how often were you using drugs? Um, I would say like three times a week. 
All right. And what drugs were you using? Anything other than meth? Um, I would take Xanax, but that was for anxiety, like half a bar a day. Okay. And have you ever um, had to do illegal things in order to obtain money for drugs? No. And the reason why I'm asking you this is because I'm trying to think of a great program for you because CPS is not giving a child back to somebody who's in the throes of their addiction. And you're gonna need a support system and your support system cannot just be your mom and your dad because sometimes moms and dads enable people because they wanna see the best in their child. They don't wanna see, oh, could she be using drugs? Could she not be using drugs? They'll lean towards, no, she's not using. So that's why I'm trying to understand. And the only courts that are available for treatment right now is Esperanza Court. And Esperanza Court are people who have been maybe victims of sex trafficking, uh, people who have sold their bodies for different things. So that's why I'm trying to figure out because that's the only court that will be available for you. So that's why I ask. So the questions I ask, I'm not trying to embarrass anyone but I need to get this information so I can get the right uh, conditions for you so that you can be successful and not end up going to prison, okay? So let's start back over. So have you done anything um, illegal in order to obtain drugs? And if you wanna ask her that in private and then just tell me the answer counsel, because I think you know what question I'm asking. Okay. All right. So what are you planning on doing with your life? How are you planning to support yourself? Um, when I get, I'm actually uh, kind of excited about getting, I feel like this is, I feel like this is a new start for a new beginning for me and my son. Um, for myself, of course, I want to start working. I want to be part of society. I want to be a role model to my daughter and my youngest daughter who seems to be following in my footsteps. Um, I'm kind of excited to, I feel like I'm starting over. I'm getting a chance to start over and change my people, place, and things. All right, I need everybody to whisper. You would have to wait till she calls you. Okay. All right. So you want to explain to me, and I have no problem with people having tattoos, but I'm always interested. You know, what does it mean? So what is the tattoo on your chest about? The big one, yes. I got, this is one of the first tattoos I got. Um, I kind of honestly regret all of my tattoos. But what is the chest tattoo? What is that? It says time is money. Okay. And then the other tattoos, what are the, those all about? Um, this is for my sister. Uh, my baby dad that passed away. Um, this says dream to sign. And my friend that passed away. And names. Okay. Well, I mean, here's the thing. Sometimes you can regret that you did different things, but the key is to make changes so it doesn't happen again. Yes. All right, this is what the court is going to do. Court is going to sentence you to five years in the prison, suspended and probated for five years. Take in consideration county court cause number 636. 158. 697151, 120 hours of community service restitution. 40 of those hours will be waived if you provide proof of the COVID vaccination. The court is not requiring you to get the COVID vaccination, but if you do with the booster, 40 of those hours will be waived. Parenting classes 
and the remaining of the hours will be waived once you complete parenting classes. If um, CPS gives you parenting classes, which they should, that can count towards this. Uh, there's going to be CPS compliance, no unsupervised contact with minors, no contact with Isaiah Salinas or Cal Herrera. There's to be regular reporting by Zoom or in person. I'm going to want field visits three times per month until further notice. Uh, if probation wants one of those field visits or wants the field visits to count for her reporting, it can. I'm going to want the UA hotline. And with the UA hotline, she needs to call every day and at least be tested one time per week. And uh, probation, if you feel like she is accomplishing things, then we can taper that off. But when I say taper it off, we don't go from she's testing every week to she's only testing once a month. And usually you all will send me a notice and I'll, I'll put the changes in there. Proof of employment within 30 days. There's to be no employment as a home health care provider or with minors. You're going to either need to get your GED or get some kind of trade school so you can better yourself, okay? And I'm going to want 90 sober meetings in 90 days. We'll do a TAP evaluation out of custody. Uh, I know the TAP evaluation may recommend inpatient treatment, uh, but whatever TAP recommends, I want her to start with intensive outpatient treatment. If that doesn't work, then we're going to be looking at inpatient treatment. And if you miss your TAP evaluation appointment, what's going to end up happening is a warrant's going to be issued, and one or two things are going to happen. Either you're going to end up going to prison or either you're going to end up sitting in jail to do the tap. So this is a time for you to make choices. All right. You're welcome. Let me ask you, um, when you're released, do you have a place to stay? Where will that be? Um, with my mom and dad. With who? My mom and dad. Here's the problem with that. Oh, child protective services. I don't know what they're going to plan. Their plan is going to be, but usually their plan is. You can't stay there. So uh, I think there is a program. Judge, Judge yes. um, the CPS worker told me yesterday that they're probably going to take temporary custody. He want, I was out there, so she wants me to let her know what happened today, whether she's going to be sentenced on the bench or not. Mm -hmm. So I can let her know that. I think they'll probably take temporary custody of the child. At least she'll have a custody. Okay. Well, uh, I'm not your CPS attorney, but. Um, this is what I can tell you. Your child is three years old. You will find on the CPS side that when a three-year-old or one-year-old is placed in care, in foster care, everybody wants it because it's a cute baby and they feel, and they want it. So, um, well, I say it, they want the child because everybody loves the little babies, right? So you're going to have to make sure that you do everything that's asked of you. And I don't know, they may decide this, the baby can stay with your parents, but you can't live there. So we're back to the point. If you are not allowed to live with your parents because the child is there, do you have a place to stay? All right, probation, is there, um, can you look into a sober living house for her? Yes. So I'm gonna put here, um, Defendant to reside at um, Sober Living House. <laughs> and I think there's a victory outreach. There are a couple that uh, have that. Okay. I do have my end. If, if um, the CPS folks, where I can't stay with my mom and dad, 
I do have my aunt, which is my, my mom's sister, um, that I can stay with. She's blind and um, and deaf, but if that doesn't work out with my mom and dad, I can go there, but, or, or you told the probation. All right, probation, this is what we'll do. If she can get placed in a sober living house directly from jail, then I want her in a sober living house. If it's going to take some time, she can reside with her aunt for two months, but then she needs to go to a sober living house because I need you with somebody who knows what addiction looks like and not enable. You understand? All right. Is there anything else with regards to sentencing? Is there anything else you need from the court to be successful? Uh, probation. Is there anything else she needs? No. All right, Ms. Rodriguez, I'm going to show you what's entitled trial court certification of defendants rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Yes, you Counsel, because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Do you understand? Yes, because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? Yes, yeah. All right. Good luck to you. We can get off the record. Thank you. Uh, I always ask a lot of questions because I want to make sure that the conditions of probation are tailored for you as an individual, not in general. Okay. All right. Do better. You're welcome. Who's here on Samuel Rodriguez?